Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. I'm Basil, and this video is all about the Huawei P20 Pro's camera. It's an explainer video of sorts. Now, if you caught our rumors videos, you'll have known that I've compared it to the Nokia PureView. If the rumors were anything to go by, this thing had a big sensor in it, oversampled it into a smaller image, and the rumors have been absolutely true. So I'm gonna explain it all in a lot more detail with the confirmed specifications. So you've got this 14 megapixel RGB sensor. That's a color sensor, nice big sensor sensor, but there's no optical image stabilization. Rather, you've got something called AIS on there, artificial image stabilization. So it uses all the information across all the cameras to hold everything nice and still digitally. You've also got a monochrome sensor that's black and white. This is 20 megapixels, nice big aperture on that. So it should let a lot of light in and help generally with low light performance, as well as capture perspective information. So you can do those Huawei tricks we've seen before, blurry background, sharp, foreground and obviously the very very cool light trail mode that I keep banging on about. In addition you've got the optical zoom camera and it has optical image stabilization which is great. 8 megapixels it's not the highest pixel count but thanks to a smart zoom technique that Huawei uses they claim you can get a relatively lossless five times zoom from this combining the 40 megapixels of information with that optical zoom. Back to the 40 megapixel RGB sensor, and while it will have tiny pixels itself, it only outputs 10 megapixel images. And it does this because of a technique called oversampling. It grabs a collection of pixels, squishes them together, averages out the image information within each pixel, and produces the best pixel possible. Or oh, that's how it's meant to work. We've seen this on the Nokia 808 PureView and the Lumia 1020 before. It has a 41 megapixel sensor that squishes the images down into five megapixel images and for that time they were two of the best camera phones around. This doesn't just bode well for quality, it also bodes well for storage because having a ton of 40 megapixel images on your smartphone, yeah, that's going to fill it up pretty quickly even if you do have 128 gigs on board by default. What's really nice is that you can actually override all this oversampling and shoot 40 megapixels by default. You might wonder why you'd ever want to if you can get this thing on a tripod bypassing that AIS flicking full manual mode on while it gives you a shutter speed of over 30 seconds. This means if you point it up at stars, you can do star trails really beautifully. And with 40 megapixels of information, it's really gonna look incredible even when you zoom in. If it's a well-lit day, you can also crop into shots so you can get multiple pictures out of your individual 40 megapixel snap. To give you an idea of what the competition's working with, while Huawei claims that the P20 Pro with its 40 megapixel image oversample down to 10 will give you the equivalent of a two micron pixel size. Apple's iPhone has a 1.22 micron pixel size, while the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S9 has a 1.4 micron pixel size. Now the Huawei P20 regular beats both of those at 1.55 microns, but the P20 Pro reigns supreme if theory stands up to reality. There is a lot more to picture quality than just pixel size. You've got to consider the aperture of the lens, you've got to consider the image stabilization being used, whether or not the AIS really comes good in the end, and you've also got to consider the software. Look at the Google Pixel series, they're able to wipe the the floor with the majority of the competition, not because of the hardware being used, but because Google has fine-tuned the software to balance contrast, exposure, saturation, and everything just very, very well. And so on paper, the Huawei P20 Pro really does excite. It offers something we've seen before, oversampling, paired with something new, that AIS, and how it all comes together in a smartphone that looks this good in 2018. I think this will be one of the hottest anticipated reviews of the the year. Hopefully until our review drops you've enjoyed this video and all our P20 coverage. Make sure you check out all the videos and articles on techradar.com if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.